I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ uh, this morning. Uh, this morning I want to emphasize the fact that our relationship with the Savior of the world, with our beloved Lord Jesus Christ, is very, very important. When it was possible to take Jesus out of the New Testament, out of the Bible, the Bible is of no use anymore. Today I want to speak about the subject, how often I have longed to gather your children together, but you are not willing. It is Matthew 23 and verse 37. There is a good reason for all the things that happened to Israel in the Old Covenant. When we read 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11, we read that these things in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, happened to them, to Israel, as examples and were written down as a warning for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. The church history, my brothers and sisters, is also very important when we read, when we read the book of Hebrews and chapter 13 and verse 7 and verse 17. We read in verse 7, Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you, consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. When our beloved Saviour and Master, after his long and tiring journeys on foot, for the last time looked over the Mount of Olives or at, over the city of Jerusalem, he wept. He was 100% human, but also 100% God. He was the Messiah, the second person in the Trinity, the Eternal Son, who is not bound by time and distance as we are. He saw children playing in the streets of Jerusalem, children he knew and loved. After all, according to the Scriptures, God also knows every hair on our heads. All the days of our lives are recorded in His book long before we were born, according to the well-known Psalm 139 verse 16. He is, after all, the one who loves and understands our deepest desires or the expressions of sorrow, the intentions and motives of our hearts and the most private and intimate desires of the subconscious mind. When Jesus looked over the Mount Olives for the last time before his crucifixion on Calvary, God wept because he saw parents who laughed at his effortless labor, the thousands of miles he traveled on foot through dusty streets and dirty roads on this earth. They laughed at all his tears, prayers, trials and tribulations as if it was just nothing. Here in the south, in the city of Jerusalem, they regarded him as a false prophet and an illegitimate child out of wedlock and they shared these opinions with their innocent children who played in the streets. The Saviour and Redeemer of the world was finally crucified outside the city of Jerusalem as an unholy and ungodly heathen. According to the Jews, he, was, he would desecrate the city. This was the reason for his great sorrow, as throughout the millenniums, because he was also God, since the spiritual fall of modern man. We read something about God's great and holy heart, and his love for mankind in Genesis 6 verse 6 and in Luke 19 verse 41 to 44. We read here in verse 41, As he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and he wept over it. He said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground 
you and your children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you didn't recognize the time of God's coming to you. There is a fatal little time, my brother and sister, also here and now in South Africa, in every man and every woman's life, when the Spirit of God paints very clearly the events surrounding the time that Christ walked the earth, His life and His death on the cross. These same children who used to play in the streets of Jerusalem were between 40 and 50 years old when the Roman army and the commander surrounded, invaded and totally destroyed the city of Jerusalem. The famous historian Flavius Josephus defended the fortress of Jotapata that was captured during the, the first battle. Yet because he was a very famous historian in the world at that time, he was pardoned by Titus and he was able to record for prosperity the invasion and destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. The method of execution for insurgents was crucifixion under the Roman role of the, those days. More than 2,000 crosses were erected on the main routes to Jerusalem by 60,000 well-trained Roman soldiers. After the city was invaded, many of these people and also many of the same children who used to play in the streets were crucified. On two occasions during the invasion, negotiations were held with the inhabitants of Jerusalem to surrender, but they did not want to surrender against a large force of Roman soldiers because they trusted God and and in their Lord, while they crucified his only son and considered him an illegitimate child. Eventually, eventually thousands of Jews were separated from loved ones and loaded on ships and taken away to foreign lands as slaves because they did not notice the promising and hopeful times when God visited them. We read in Luke 19 verse 44, because you did not notice the auspicious time, in other words, the right time, the good times, when God visited you. The blood literally flowed in streams at the end of the invasion, for the insurgents killed by the sword were piled on top of one another. So terrible was the sight and scenes in the city that the hardened commander and head of the Roman army finally put his hands in the air at the end of the battle and prayed and said, O oh God, do not hold me responsible for the blood of these people. The same life story, the suffering, trials and tribulations of our beloved Saviour and Master were recorded for a specific purpose by four different writers and thus must urge us as a nation to deep reflection and contemplation. We must read the four Holy Gospels more and more because the Gospel will be more and more relevant for each and everyone as we all approach the day of rapture in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 52. If the holy life and this uh, Point number 14 here on the screen is very important. If the holy life, the many parables, corrections, rebuking, preaching, trials and tribulations of the coming Christ, as described in the four holy gospels, including the things that were near and dear to him during his time on earth, the things that he cared about, the things that touched his great and holy heart personally, and the things that grieved him and made him happy, when these things in the Bible become important to us as a nation and cherished by us, then I have hope for our country and for our people. I want to repeat this point number 14. It's very important. If the holy life the many parables, corrections, rebuking, preaching, trials and tribulations of our coming Christ, as described in the four Holy Gospels, including the things that were near and dear to Him 
during his time on earth, the things that he cared about, the things that touched his great and holy heart personally, the things that grieved him and made him happy, when these things in the Bible became important to us and cherished by us as, as a nation, then I have hope for our country and for our people. We read in John 1 verse 1, God is the Word, and the Word is God. When we have no time for God's Word, we have no time for God. When His Holy Words in the four Holy Gospels became important to us, precious and valuable for us, deep down in our hearts, it will be like stepping stones for Christ in His walk with us. When there are many Holy Words, out of the scriptures in our hearts about our wonderful Lord and our wonderful Savior, it will be like stepping stones for our beloved Savior and Master to complete the good work in our hearts as we read it in Philippians 1 verse 6. However, to follow Jesus Christ and to serve Him in spirit and in truth comes at a price. He expects not confession of all sins all the time, but an intimate walk and fellowship with Him and with the Word. In Matthew 23 verse 37 we read, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks and her wings, and you were not willing. A very good kind of person, like Nicodemus, Cornelius and Job, who rejects the Saviour of the world on the long term is far more worse than a murderer and a thief. My brother and sister, thank you for listening to me. May our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ bless you abundantly and may you think about these words uh, on this, uh, of this preaching. Thank you very much and have a good day.